This is the 8th video in the series for Word 2013 and in this video I want to go through the buttons under the review tab. So we've gone through a lot of the different tabs so we'll come to the review tab and here we'll talk about spelling and grammar, we'll talk about track changes and restricting editing options. So I just want to add some text here so if I want I can type equal R-A-N-D bracket I can say give me 10 paragraphs with 5 lines each. Enter. So now I've got some information so I can use that and what I'll do is I'll make some spelling mistakes here in a couple of different places so that we'll get some red lines when we do that. So wherever I'm making a spelling mistake I see a red line. Wherever you see like a green line you'll find that the green line means that there is a grammar error. So let's see if something comes up as I'm removing some of these options. Usually they should start to show up in a couple of places. Okay. So we don't have any green lines but that's fine. That's just the grammar error. So where do we see the red line? That's the spelling mistakes and word is really good with spelling checks so be but before you set your spelling and you check it you want to set your language so under the review tab there is a button here for language you click it and then you set the proofing language so you click it and because in different countries they have different spellings so I'm in Canada so our English spellings are a little bit different than English United States so I'll just click here type E on the keyboard so I jump to the E section and then I click on English Canada and then I say set as default and it, it will take effect next time around I'll say yes and I'll click OK. Now you can start your spell check and it will open a small window now in this new version it comes up on the right hand side so it's giving me an option that VIDO it's, it's saving me is it void is it video so I know in this case it's video so I'll click it and I choose change if this was right then I'll choose ignore or ignore all so every time this word is there it will not recognize it as an error so I can change right now the next one gets highlighted and saying is it wood I'll say no this is word I'll say change layout so I'll choose layout and I'll hit change so you go through the whole document and then it will come up saying your spelling check is complete. Now if you ever had a spelling mistake too, you could just right click on it and you'll see the option and then you can choose the option from there. Another option you can also use is you can say add it to dictionary so that it will remember it. So say for example if I type my name somewhere and there's a good chance that my name is not part of my dictionary, my first and last name. So in this case it's not coming up usually the red line comes up so I could just add it to my computer's dictionary so that it will remember it so it does it will not prompt me as an error the other thing they have also added in um, Word 2010 is this define option so say if I choose a word like a point here and I choose define I click it it will give you a meaning of a word but before you can do that you have to download one of these dictionaries so they have a couple of different dictionaries so say I want the Bing English dictionary I can download it and I can install it so it is loading right now so the dictionary is loaded and now it's giving me point and then it's giving me different meanings and idea and I can click on this to actually listen to it I'm not, and it just said I'll press it again you may have heard a slight word so that's a really good way if you were looking for a define option uh, along with that they also have an option so if I highlight this word and I can use the thesaurus thesaurus are like you know common words close to that word. So if I click it and again on the right hand side it has the word document and it's giving me different meanings. So if I want I can take, add the word essay and it will tell me what the meaning of the essay is. I'll hit the back arrow here and so say if I like the word essay I can right click on it and I can choose insert 
and it adds it on top of that word. So I'll just close this window here. And there's a button here called word count, which will tell you how many words are there. You can also get to it from the right, left hand side here on the bottom, where it says 799 and how many pages you have. So that finishes up the spelling options and all the other options. And also there's an option to translate things. Um, and it's kind of um, working sometimes good, sometimes not. So say for example, I type uh, good morning and I'll also put the word hello. So if I highlight the word good morning, I can go to translate and there is an online translation service that you can go to if you click on it but if you just wanted to translate the highlighted text I can just click it here and here it's trying to do a translation on the right hand side and um, I need to translate it to say uh, French and it's giving me good and then it's giving me the different English wordings for it and then morning and then up here to it tells me good morning and it's bonjour right there and I can scroll up I can change the from English to I can say change it to Spanish so let's see if I can find Spanish right there and here it tells me good and morning and then it gives me the together the words together there so you can do that and I can even highlight hello and I can choose translate selected text so it puts it in the box and then here is the explanation on the bottom you can also highlight and right click on it and you can go to translate and also synonyms so you can just replace it with whatever word you want you can just right click to find that option too. So the translate option is pretty good and you can always go to I think Bing has a translate option on, on Bing.com and also Google has a thing called for translate where you can just copy and paste information. So if you've never done it I'll show it to you quickly. So I've just opened my browser and you go to translate.google.com and then say I take this sentence copy it. You can take the whole paragraph too. You paste it in the box. It detects the language and you can translate it to Spanish. And you can also change it to any of these other languages that you want. Say French. And then a lot of these you can also listen to it. So you can press it and it will speak the language back to you. So you can use that option. Uh, the next uh, I want to talk about is called track changes. So sometimes, you know, you send your resume or your document to somebody and you want them to make corrections to it. Now, when they make corrections, you don't know what has been changed and what hasn't been changed. So to, to do that, you, what you do is you turn on the track changes. So when you turn on the track changes, save your file, email it to that person or give it to that person. When this person opens it and they start making changes, so say if they highlight it and then they start typing, it will start tracking it. So if it is, it will start tracking and then if it inserts something, it is all being tracked and you can see the red line on the left hand side. And in the previous version, you would have been seeing all the changes, but in this case, they are hiding it. And you just point to it and it says, click to show. So if you click it, now it just shows me some of the changes that has happened. So if I, it hides it by default. So wherever I highlight or delete and then I type something in its place, it is being tracked by the red line and I can click it to see it. Now, once you get this, you are going to start it from the top. I can, once you get the file, you start tracking and looking at the changes and you get to accept and reject the changes. So I can click on next and now you see it highlights this. Now I can say do I want to accept it or reject it. So now if I want it I could click it so that I can see the options. So now I can say you know what accept it and move to next. So if I just click on the top it will automatically move to the next one and then I can say reject it. I can reject this. I think for some reason this one didn't happen properly so I'll just go to next 
and I'll say accept and move to next. So now it's accepted. Now if I don't want it, I can reject it. Now if I want this, I can accept it. So all the track changes are happened, have been taken care of. I think there is one more. Reject. Reject. Okay. And then make sure you turn off the track changes, otherwise anything you do will be again be tracked. So now I can come here and I can make the changes. So this is a very good way to allow all your changes that are happening, either done by you or someone else, so it can be tracked. And even when you have your track changes on and the changes are being made, you can also choose to have the reviewing pane on the vertical on the left or you can have it on the bottom on the horizontal. So if I choose the vertical, so now I can see the options as to what changes happened then and what, who was doing it. So you can choose that and I can again go to the top and I can go through accept, can reject, reject and the changes have been done. And sometimes you might find that uh, even when you've gone through this, you may still see some lines. So if that happens, then you can click here and I, you can say no markup so that there are none of the markups there. You can look at the original if you wanted to look at it or simple or all markups. There are different ways of viewing the options that you've done here. The next thing we want to talk about is the options where you can compare documents. Like say you had two different revisions that you wanted to see which document had what lines and where, what changes you wanted to allow. Or you wanted to combine two different documents into one so you can try that. So what I'll do is I'll just do it from here, compare. And when you do that, you get to choose which is your original document. So usually this is like that, so I'll keep it like that. And I can browse to where my document is. So then my first one is document A. And then I'll revise document. You may also see it in the drop down button if you want it. And the revised document is document A.1. Now in the more, I can say that where do I want the changes to show up? Do I want it in a new document? Do I want it in an original document or the revised? So this will be the original and this is the revised. So I'll say, you know what, let's leave it in the new so that I don't lose the original and the revised. And I'll click OK. So you can see here, this is the first document and this is the second document on the bottom which almost is the same except for the last line. So if you see in this old merge document compare, it adds that and you have the reviewing pane. So I can just go through the next option. I can click on the top and I can say accept and I can accept this. So it no longer has the line on it. So now when I save this document, this is called compare result 4. So that means this is my document where I compared it and I got it together. And the same way you can do it where you can just choose to combine and all you have to do is say which is the original document, which is the revised document and you can choose to combine it in a new document. So they all both information from both the documents will be merged together. So I'll just close this up. I don't need to save it. The last thing I want to talk about this video is about restrict editing. So it's, you can save your file and you can restrict what others can do. So I haven't saved this file so I'll show you how to do it from here but I want to show you one more way. So if I go to save and I go to browse and I'll choose wherever and then I'll just give it a name. Now while you are saving it, you can click in this drop down button where it says tools and you can go to general options and in this window you can put a password. You can say password to open and then password to modify. So in this case, even when the file opens, people will be asked to put a password and after that or if I didn't have the password to open that means anybody can look at it but to make changes they will need to provide a password to modify and you can also make it read only if you wanted it so we'll, I'll show you another way and I'll just hit save 
So from here in the review, I can click on restrict editing and I can say limit to format into a certain styles and there are different settings you can go through what you want to allow and what you don't want to allow. Um, you can allow certain types of restrictions and you do if you had different groups you can say everyone and then you can start en enforcing it. Now I need to put the password which was also there in the previous video window and I can say new password and I click OK. So now the restrictions are being done. So certain changes people won't be able to make unless and until they knew the password to make the changes. So now if I try to highlight something and I try to delete it or try to type something over it, as I'm typing, it's not letting me do anything. So I'll have to click on restrict editing button and I'll have to click on stop restriction. It will ask me for the password and I'll click OK. Now I'll be able to make changes to it. So that should do it for this video. Uh, so in this video you understood spelling and grammars and the options for tracking changes and comparing documents and also restrictions. Restricting your document to who and what changes can be allowed. Thank you for watching. In D bracket I can say give me 10 paragraphs but 5 lines each. Enter. So now I've got some information so I can use that and what I'll do is I'll make some spelling mistakes here in a couple of different places so that we'll get some red lines when we do that so wherever I'm making a spelling mistake I see a red line wherever you see like a green line you'll find that the green line means that there is a grammar error so let's see if something comes up as I'm removing some of these options usually they should start to show up in a couple of places. Okay. So we don't have any green lines, but that's fine. That's just the grammar error. So where do we see the red line? That's the spelling mistakes. And Word is really good with spelling checks. So, be But before you set your spelling and you check it, you want to set your language. So under the review tab, there is a button here for language. You click it and then you set the proofing language. So you click it and because in different countries they have different spellings. So I'm in Canada, so our English spellings are a little bit different than This is the eighth video in the series for Word 2013. And in this video, I want to go through the buttons under the review tab. So we've gone through a lot of the different tabs. So we'll come to the review tab. And here we'll talk about spelling and grammar. We'll talk about track changes and restricting editing options. So I just want to add some text here. So if I want, I can type equal RA English United States. So I'll just click here, type E on the keyboard. So I jump to the E section. And then I click on English Canada and then I say set as default and it, it will take effect next time around I'll say yes and I'll click OK now you can start your spell check and it will open a small window